mid-April. Blue skies, low tide. When I arrived at the station, I was appointed as the commander for the, for the shout. First thing we heard is there was two horses stuck in the mud, which was a first for ourselves. So, you know, there's a lot going through our heads about how, how to tackle that. Then more information came through that there was human casualties there as well. So that made the situation even more serious. Were the humans in danger of being stuck under the horses? We did not know, so it, it was a very, very tense time. My worst case scenario with people and animals stuck in the mud is the tide. If the tide's flooding, um, if we're coming up to high water and we get that call, time is, is critical. As well as the risk to human life adding to the urgency of the shout. The crew also discover that the two riders are young girls aged just 14 and 11. It was quite emotional, really, because we didn't know what to expect. Things start coming into your mind, whether it's going to be any injuries. The other thing that went through my head is I've never dug a horse out mud before, so this is going to be interesting. It takes the crew 10 minutes to reach the shout location. As they draw closer, they spot something. We knew that we only had one horse to deal with then. As the pilot of the craft, I had to be mindful of not getting too close to the casualties with there being horses involved. I didn't want them to get spooked and scared. When we arrived there, Merseyside Fire and Rescue were already there, and some of the Coast Guards were already there. We established that both riders were, uh, in fact, OK. But once we saw the horse stuck in the mud, we realised that it wasn't going to be such a simple job. Yeah. Do you want to put the boards down? Yeah, yeah. Though one horse and both riders are safe, the hovercraft crew still have a half-ton problem on their hands. The horse was pretty stuck. He was stuck all the way, all the way to the tops of his legs. He was a lot deeper than what I envisioned on our way out there. I was quite surprised to see a horse in that area, to be honest, and I heard that the horse had bolted from the beach and the other horse had followed. I don't think she would have gone there by herself initially wanting to go there. The sand is always shifting. These mud flats move and gullies move, so it wasn't a very pleasant place to be. Yeah, do you guys, you got the mud shoes on? Do you yeah. want to go around and start digging that side? Yeah. So I want to get her out all at the same time. It was just a case of digging by hand at first, so we started to dig, and we dug and we dug and we dug as a whole team effort. I initially thought, oh, we'll get this horse out in a few minutes. We dug for about 45 minutes, I think it was. Whoa, 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 whoa. Watch yourselves. Then Bobby decides to jump out the mud by himself. Oh, I think. And then he sunk again. I was feeling pretty deflated once we got him free and uh, he instantly got stuck again and we were back to square one. An hour after launching, the crew are still no closer to freeing Bobby. We talked with our fire colleagues, our Coast Guard colleagues, to come up with another plan, really. It was quite a multi-agency job, pooling our, our knowledge, our resources uh, and our equipment together. We used some of the fire equipment, some strops and some lifts to try and uh, help him out in the mud whilst we were digging. Is that stuck? Yeah. That's soft just there, Matt, so just watch it. Oh, that's solid here, isn't it? Working in mud, it has its own challenges. Sometimes feels like you're getting nowhere fast with it. The only way you can really sort of deal with getting someone out is to get right down with your belly down in it as well, alongside them, and start, start digging them out. As time ticks on, the mud is now not their only problem. But as the job progressed and as um, it became more complex, the issue of tide started to concern me. At one point, uh, the horse was breathing quite heavily. 
after discussion with Ian, we established that uh, he was in quite a bit of distress and discomfort, and that did make things a little bit more critical. Passing the water there, Matt. I'll get up to see if I give him more water. Didn't want any before. He was drinking water out of my hand a couple of times. And you could see with his breathing, it sort of eased, which was great. Ian talking to Bobby did help. I think we all found ourselves at one point uh, talking to Bobby. So we all we were all uh, we were all rooting for him. Then, after more than three hours digging. Bobby was uh, obviously quite tired, but he still had the energy in him that once he felt a bit of freedom, a bit of movement in his legs, that he was trying to uh, trying to stand up and try and free himself, which unfortunately hindered the process. After only a few metres, Bobby gets stuck again. His instinct to bolt is landing him right back in trouble. Still, with almost 300 metres of mud between him and the shore, the chances of getting him to safety before the tide returns are falling fast. After the horse got stuck the third time, it did cross my mind that we could be fighting a losing battle. We had about an hour left before the tide was would have been up to us, so it was starting to get a little bit worrying because three and a half, four hours of digging, and it was very, very stuck in the mud and going nowhere fast. The crew need to come up with yet another plan. As they can't get the horse to solid ground, they decide to bring solid ground to him instead. It was uh, a very, very much a team effort. So what's the plan with the stop? He's going to go, he's going to go. So if he goes, he goes. He's going. So what's it? He's going. Using our equipment, our mud boards and our mud uh, rescue techniques. Come on, Bobby. 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 So yeah, try and pull him, try and pull the strap. But having the extra hands there um, from the fire brigade and the coast guard were definitely needed. Everybody played a part there. Oh, he's, he's, stuck, he's on the strap, he's on the strap. Right, drop the strap then, drop the strap. Come on, Bobby. Come on, mate. Come on. We had to get him out of that mud because he was really starting to dwindle that horse, you know, he was tired. We were all tired. He's on the mat at least anyway. Right, is it worth putting one round his bum? It was a case of, right, we've all got to give it one big last push. So we had straps round his backside, round his legs and round his tail. And we all said, right, let's go. We all counted to three and we pulled. Everyone happy? Yeah. OK, happy. Come on, Bobby, you have to help us now, mate. One, two, three. Come on, Bobby. Come on, Bobby. Come on. There were seven of us physically pulling that horse out of the mud, and it needed every inch of our strength to get that horse out of that mud. Come on, hang on, whoa, stop. One, two, three. And we pulled and we shouted, come on, Buffy, get out. There we go. And he came out, and he seemed to know where to go to and stood on the board, and it was such a relief. It was the hardest thing I think I've ever done. After the shout, we did get a call to say um, they got it back to the um, paddocks where it was kept. It was doing well. It was scary. I think it was just traumatic for me and Bobby, like, both together. But obviously not now. He's, like, like this. <laughs> I love him to bits.